to face to face and today uh, it's going to be a very special show it's going to be face to faces and with uh, uh, three guests and we're going to talk about immigration we're going to talk about youth we're going to talk about a, a consultation camp and uh, with the, the japanese community uh, and to uh, introduce uh, the, the show today uh, we have um, uh, a japanese american woman who has been uh, uh, on, the, on the camp uh, during World War II and at uh, Fort Seal, Oklahoma and uh, um, Satsuku Ina and she's, uh, she, we're going to see a video of her uh, making a stand during the, uh, the protest on June 27th. Five years ago, 120,000 of us were removed from our homes and forcefully incarcerated prison camps across the country. We are here today to protest the repetition of history. We were in American concentration camps. We were held under indefinite detention. We were without due process of law. We were charged without any evidence of being a threat to national security, that we were an unassimilable race, that we would be a threat to the economy. We hear these exact words today regarding innocent people seeking asylum in this country. And unlike 1942, when America turned their back on us while we were disappearing from our homes, our schools, our, our farms, and our jobs. We're here today to speak out, to protest the unjust incarceration of innocent people seeking refuge in this country. We stand with them and we are saying stop repeating history. I am the uh, co-leader of Tsuda for Solidarity Project, which is the group that we're all a part of mm -hmm. that went to Fort Sill. Um, we've also been to the Dilly Detention Site in Texas, where we also staged a protest there. And we're also members of the New York Day of Remembrance Committee that's uh, based out of New York City. And that's a Japanese American organization that advocates um, for civil liberties. So. Um, I'll just quickly say that we, as Japanese Americans, are descendants of um, family members that were incarcerated during World War II, um, as Southkey was talking about in that video. Recently, the Trump administration announced that it intends to use Fort Sill, which is an army base in Oklahoma, yeah. um, to imprison unaccompanied minors from the border who are seeking asylum. Yeah. So. Uh, they're using, they're intending to use the, a former U.S. Japanese American concentration camp site to imprison children again. This is also a site where um, the um, Apache people were forcibly removed from the southwest and brought to Fort Sill as well mm -hmm. um, as prisoners of war. And later on, where children from numerous tribes in the United States were brought to Fort Sill to a boarding school where they were um, really, um, well, cultural genocide was attempted on them. Um, they were stripped of their language and their culture and their people. And um, so now what we're seeing is a repetition of history where they're trying to now use this, this desecrated place, really, um, once again to um, perpetuate this pattern of uh, forced removal, incarceration, and separation of families. Right now, Fort Sill is an yeah. operational oh, oh, I was it's, it's, yeah. 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 it's it's in full operation. It's actually mm -hmm. very large, and right. it's really the economic center of the city of Lockton. Mm -hmm. So you know the mil military and industrial complex is really based. That's a good example of what's going on mm -hmm. there. Yeah. So as Mike said, my name is Linda Morris. Hi. And um, I am the descendant of uh, camps that were located in Jerome and Aurora, Arkansas. Mm -hmm. 
Um, my family was incarcerated there, and um, in particular, my, my grandmother, so when I think about this, I think of my grandmother's experience. Um, she was 22 when she was incarcerated, and she was forced to leave her home in California, and she was separated from her father um, shortly after entering the camps. Her mother passed away, became sick, and passed away. And she was tasked with taking care of her younger siblings. And um, she endured so much trauma and so much heartache in those camps. And growing up, it was an unspoken rule that we couldn't talk about the camps, that even mentioning the camps was enough to really. To with yeah. what happened there. Yeah, it was enough to, to really send her into you know, hysterical tears. And, and so we didn't talk about it. Uh, my parents talked about it. Oh, okay. And we would talk about it when my, my grandparents weren't around. Okay. Um, and I think I, you know, one of the, the greatest impact, I think, of my family's experience is this inherited trauma that was passed down from my mother and her siblings to me and my siblings and, and my cousins and other family members. And, and we really inherited that. And I think it's been completely inseparable from my own experience as a Japanese American today. Um, I, I, for as long as I can remember, I carried that trauma mm -hmm. and I carried that pain and my family's history with me. And um, when, you know, I talked, I didn't get a chance to talk to my grandmother very much about this, but when I did, I remember her telling me that it was really painful for her, but that she believed in what America stood for. And so when I see everything that's happening today, I'm so angry. I'm just so angry, and I and I and when I think about why it was important for for us to go there, I think about how I wish more than anything for my family to have had the experience of people standing up and speaking out against what was happening to them. Um, I would have given anything for my family to have known that there were people fighting, and I would do anything to make sure that the families and the children who are being incarcerated today. Um, uh, there are people fighting for them. And you consider yourself as a survivor in some way? I consider myself a descendant of survivors. Okay. Okay. Um, but I do very much see myself as completely, um, everything that's a part of me is completely intertwined with my family's experience mm -hmm. and their history. And I think one more thing that's really meaningful for me in this experience is I think it's provided me in many ways of a chance to sort of have a conversation and express something to my family that I wasn't able to express when my grandparents were still alive, which is that what happened to them was wrong and that we'll do anything to make sure that they're Oh, and Sunita, um, and uh, my grandparents were incarcerated at Rower, Arkansas, and that's a history that I was trying to think, I don't remember like a clear point when it was ever talked about in my family. It just feels like something that's always been there. Um, but also just like the silence around it, like not what's in the past is in the past. And I think this is probably common to Japanese Americans who've been through this, is perhaps wanting to protect their children and descendants from that history by just leaving it alone, but in fact, it doesn't go. It doesn't go away, yeah. and I think um, both of my grandparents passed away many years ago. So again, there's sort of this yeah. disconnect where mm -hmm. I wasn't able to really ever talk about it deeply with them. And until recently, I didn't know that my grandfather's father was actually someone who was taken away right after Pearl Harbor. So he was separated from his wife and six children and sent to um, a Department of Justice camp in Montana um, and was separated them for almost a year. And that's that whole history of thousands of first generation, we say Japanese American, mostly men, were taken to all these camps um, around the country, including Fort Sill. And I've been going through family letters and just looking through to try to um, gain some sense of what their experiences were because I don't have them with me anymore. And I think that history is um, so important to keep alive because they're gone and uh, it's 
they would have spoken out against what's happening now if they were here. And to echo what, what everyone else has said and what Tatsuki was saying is um, we need to be those allies be there at yeah. Fort Sill. Mm -hmm. um, I, it was incredibly powerful to be there with camp survivors. Um, even if none of us had a direct connection to Fort Sill, it was, it's a space that um, Tommy Kata, a Den Show director, he described it as being layered in trauma. There's just layers mm -hmm. over time. And that's that was so real to have us there, but also members um, of the local indigenous groups supporting us and just seeing survivors and descendants all gathered in one place to speak out against another layer being added to that site, I think. Um, we see it so much where the, our government will just repurpose the same tools of oppression over and over again. Like I didn't know until I went to Dili that the Japanese Crystal City camp, they took the fences and the posts after the war and used them to make a border wall in California. So they actually, it's such a small example that they took those same ways of keeping us in and started to use them to keep other communities out. And we see that at Fort Sill, too, of keeping the same communities shut in and away from everyone else. Um, and I just wanted to be able to join with other voices in that space to say, no, we can't have another layer to this trauma that this site is just imbued with. Uh -huh. What happened in this protest was <clears throat> that survivors of, of the Japanese American concentration camp, who were also children when they were incarcerated, so, so, so <coughs> she, she, was, she was born in the yes, Trotsky was born yeah. in the camp. Yeah. So all of the people that you will see in this video, yeah. uh, the five who are standing up in front, they're surrounded by descendants. But what you'll see is five people who were incarcerated as children. And, and what they've done is they've decided to come back and stand with people who are also experiencing the same thing. Mm -hmm. In that moment, when you choose to do that, um, you heal yourself. Mm -hmm. And so this has been a, a very powerful transformational moment for our community. Um, in the 70s and 80s, we had a reparations movement in this in this country yep. for the people who were incarcerated. Mm -hmm. And that was really important because people were silenced and humiliated and ashamed. And that gave them the opportunity to come out and start to shed that humiliation and speak out and tell their stories. But now what we're seeing is sort of what I call part two of the reparations movement, mm -hmm. which is when you choose to go back and stand up for somebody else. Because you are no longer just, your story is no longer about what happened to you. Now you're going to reframe that moment. You know, for these people, their landscape of their childhood is one of trauma and incarceration. And so you could live with that for the rest of your life and feel That's very right. victimized by it. Yeah. But what they- The trap. The trap, right? Mm -hmm. But what they've chosen now is to use that experience on behalf of other people who are who, who need um, advocacy. Um, and so as now citizens we a very powerful testimony because we're gonna see it, but it's Absolutely. a very powerful yeah. stand that people like this can make. No one else can make this type of stand. Exactly. Well so now we're citizens, we have rights as United States citizens, we're going to leverage those exactly. you know that privilege but also, as you said, there's a moral authority that these people have that no one else has. So when you watch this in the video, what you see is that they risk everything. Yeah. This, there's, they're risking violence. They're risking um, being imprisoned. Um, the oldest survivor there is 89 years old. Yeah. And they're, they're absolutely unmovable in that moment. It, it's, it's a very moving thing. And what I have said is, this is a historic moment. This is the first that I know of um, civil disobedience action done by Japanese American concentration camp survivors. And they did it because they absolutely refused to allow this to happen to anyone else again. California.
spent the first four and a half years in a concentration camp. I was born in Topaz, Utah, and I'm here to protest against the incarceration of the immigrant children here in Florida. I'm Nikki Nojima Lewis, and on December 7, 1941, in Seattle, Washington, I was celebrating my fourth birthday when the FBI interrupted my birthday party and removed my father to Lawrenceburg, New Mexico, the DOJ camp, and subsequently Santa Fe, New Mexico. My mother and I were incarcerated at the Puyallup Fairgrounds called Camp Harmony and okay, later me, in Nina Doka, me, Idaho. And gentlemen, you cannot yes. protest on Fort Sill. If you want to protest, you have to go across the street from the highway, and that needs to happen right now. Let's go, let's go, let's go, now, today. Um, we just have our elders are saying a couple more statements, No, please. no, ma'am, you may not. You may, I, again, I will say it, this is the last time. You cannot protest on Fort Sill. You need to move across the street now. So were you going to make a statement? Yes. Apparently you didn't hear what I said. I'm sorry, sir. We you need our to people... move today, now, right now. Move. Okay. We're here to speak to the defense of children who are going to be... I, I our people that. were incarcerated here. You're not allowed here. to protest on Fort Sill. You can go across the street and, you, and that needs to happen right now. Otherwise, what will happen? I, I, I don't know. No, I'm not going to arrest you, but you need to move now. Thank you. Continue. So we're not going to continue. Continue. Yes, you're going to move. If you're not going to arrest us, we're not going to move. Go ahead. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Can everybody scoot back? Can everybody scoot back so all the cameras can see? Thank you, guys. And I'm here to bear witness to the travesty of American justice system in that the family separation policy, which is uh, ruining the lives of these children. I'm uh, very uh, incensed about the government policy of uh, separating parents, and uh, we the people have to stand up and protest yes, this. Yes, that's right. Okay. My name is Paul Tomita. I'm from Seattle, Washington. This is me in 1943 as a four-year-old it's english get out and so what we did with here is i had to have this to get hey, out hey, of look, look look I, I understand your issues okay but you cannot protest on fort sill you can go across the street and this is the last time it's public right away this is not public, sir. This our, across our the street, reach all the way to Rogers, all, all the way to Rogers Lane, Lane is the installation. Federal who built, who built the road right for here. those that are for the road right here. I, I don't know who paid for the road. That's not my issue. Taxpayer, sir. Taxpayer, this is our land. Let me speak to my people. Let us talk. You got you got two minutes. Cool. That's all we need. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So, as we discussed, we are here to make a statement. Some people here are prepared to make that statement and be arrested. Don't care because we feel that. This is an important enough statement, and we must stand up for the children who are going to be brought here. Man. All of our elders who are incarceration survivors have stated publicly that they are willing to be arrested in defense of the children who are going to be yeah, brought here. Yeah, one minute. Amen. So everyone who does not want to be arrested, please step away and go to your cars and get your cars and remove them, and we'll drive down the road to the next block. No, you can't drive down that road. We can drive down any road. Down want. the public road. Public. Just on the the public, public roads that way. Don't, don't shut up. Up. I, I will. The rest of us, or the rest of you, who are going to be arrested, please remain here. All right, all right, all right, all right. Please step away at this time. Let's go. Thank you. You're not going to be arrested. Go ahead and leave, please. Go across the street. They can't harass us across the street, everybody. Everybody's 
Yeah. Funny is, you know, to put children in concentration camps to speak out against them, it's against the law. Linda. Uh, I'm Molly with the LA Times. Uh, my name is Paul, last name Tomita, T-O-M-I-T-A. How old are you, Paul? I'm 80 years old. And where do you live? I live in Bellevue, Washington, but I was born in Seattle, Washington. And you will get arrested to protest the... And so why why are you willing to stand here and get arrested? And what, what don't you people understand? Uh, I was a child during in the 1940s during World War II. We understand the whole history of this country. Does that look like a happy camper? How about that? Thank you, sir. What were you saying, Satsuki? That uh, we, we want to make a stand. That 1,400 children are going to be brought to this military site. We're here because we do not want to have that happen. As former children of, in, of uh, prison camps, of concentration camps in America, we are saying no more, never again. Did you say your name, Satsuki? My name is Satsuki Inu. More, more voices. Can you please introduce yourself and tell us what you're doing at one? Sure. My name is Tony. I'm the executive director of Genshin. It's a nonprofit here in Seattle. And one of the things that Genshin does is put a story in the community, especially what happened in the world. So I came to you behind the side of 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 the side
The number of indigenous people in prisons in Oklahoma has increased by 46% between the years 2008 and 2015. What they did not count on is community. They think by assaulting us on all fronts, they can divide people. But I think today is just a small showing that people in Oklahoma care, that we're willing to fight, that we're willing to come together. Um, the ACLU of Oklahoma is proud anytime we can be to stand here with folks to do what we can, um, especially as people are putting their bodies on the line. Um, thank you so much, everyone. Take care of yourselves. Grab some water if you need to. This fight is going to be long, and we have to be able to stand and fight together. Thank you.